And that right there, that is straw. You can tell it's straw because of the way it is. All right, guys, welcome back to Ag with Emma. We've got the first farm tour of 2023. I'm the first. You're the first. Go, Num go. Number one. Go me. We are in Buckeye, Arizona right now. And you guys might recognize Trevor Bales. He has his own YouTube channel and all of his swag. You guys need to go check out his channel because there will be a lot more in-depth information. I almost bonked myself on that. <laughs> Um, but he will have a lot more in depth and Bales, in season. Bill's Hay Farm and Ranch. Yeah, Bill's, Bill's Hay Farm and Ranch. Perfect. YouTube. So that's his YouTube. Go check it out. We're going to cover a hay delivery today and just a, some equipment that's sitting around and kind of show you his area while we're down here. Matt, that's the daily driver for Trevor. You can't see anything, but it's there. <laughs> In Arizona, for making hay, they do have to irrigate. Their season runs from about March to December, depending on the weather. And then they also have to use steamers because of the dry climate. <laughs> okay, so we have got, is this your baler tractor? Is this that what you would call it? Tractor. We okay. used to run smaller baler tractors, two wheel drive tractors, much like, there aren't any parked around here, but they're around <laughs> here. But everyone's like, why do you guys run two wheel drive tractors? Well, we're just pulling one small three string baler. We swapped over to pulling a steamer. It's a lot more weight and we need the, and then we're all on PTOs as well, which the, the small two wheel drive tractor worked too, but we just needed a stronger tractor to push or to pull and stop this steamer. Cause when the steamer holds 700 gallons of water, it's pretty heavy, you gotta be able to stop it. And also we need a little more hydraulic power to work the steamer. So we went to a bigger tractor and we went with Fent. A Fent. Not the typical green for Emma's channel, but we'll let it slide this time. <laughs> So this is a steamer. This is a smaller steamer than traditional? Yes. So this is the fourth year that small steamers have been around, which means it's the 15th year that big steamers have been around. I might be, it might be three and three and 14, I don't remember. But anyway, so the big steamers have been around quite a while, quite a while. And so they're very, they're an established, they're an established piece of equipment. So we weren't too nervous about trying it out. And these guys work great with us. They're Staley West, they're, they're great at working with their, with their farmers West. and customers. Yep. So. I've made another hay video from last spring with a guy in Idaho and he also runs a Staley West steamer and we covered a little bit more about steamers in that video in depth. So if you want to go see that, I'll put that link in the description. So, so basically you have your tractor, the steamer, it basically just puts steam on the hay that's under this. So they run over the windrow of hay. And it pumps the steam through these hoses, which is attached the hoses aren't here. They took them off. <laughs> Imaginary they, hoses. <laughs> the big hoses that come down to right here. And then right the there. steam comes out from underneath here. And those little... Underneath right here. It's spraying the hay as it's going in. And they took the... See, they're rebuilding them right now. So we're missing lots of pieces. So this is a terrible example. <laughs> but general concept. Tractor, water, Let's just hay. quit. We, we lost it all. <laughs> so they do have a lot of in and out traffic basically every day right well, that's what's deliveries? unique yeah. about our farm we farm but then we also sell the product we create to the public we we have wholesale and retail it's like a three-prong attack right <laughs> farming retail and wholesale perfect <laughs> so yeah people come in they load up themselves they pick it out themselves and we hand load it on their vehicles this guy's got a flatbed which is great he just set uh uh the the the, the, the hay right on his pickup these guys are having to do it by hand but that's 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 how we started selling hay. And then as we grew, we got into the wholesale. And that's where we're gonna go look at the barns where the wholesale hay comes out of and gets put on semis. That right there is what you call character building is what those boys are doing right now. So in the barn area, they've had a lot of uh, a moistness Moist. over here. <laughs> Moisture. So that does cause a problem. And they are, you can see they're elevated a little bit. So Quite there's kind of like, you know, they. Water will never get up in the hay. Yes, perfect. Unless it rains a lot, a lot. No, it will no? never get in the hay. Never. Ever. 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 Wow. But there is Ever. mud right there. Never. So these barns are like ginormous. Like you can fit. What's the numbers? Uh, let's see. There's there's 24 rows of there's 24 rows of 1,024 bales. But, well, there's no, actually there's more than that. Okay, I'm gonna get my calculator right now because there's two, I forgot about the outsides. <laughs> so there's, oh, so there's, there's uh, 640. So there's 1,280 bales per row times 24 rows. So there's 30,720 bales. 
in one of the barns. So right there, that's thirty thousand bales. That's if I don't put tall stacks in the middle to take advantage of the uh, the, the peak. The peak. So like, almost thirty-one thousand. We can round up and say thirty-one. Yeah, just round up to make it seem cooler. It's not as cool as forty-three five sixty, but we'll we'll let it slide. <laughs> I think you made that number up. That's not right. Look, it's forty-three five sixty uh, square feet in an acre. So while Trevor struggles in the inventory aspect of things, here is the system right now. So this is a, I don't know, made up number, but that's uh, basically who they leased the ground from. And then that's the field. And then that's the month. So that would be the landowner. That would be the field. And then that is the fifth month. So this is hay June, from September. May. September? The fifth month is May. Oh, wait, the fifth month of the growing season? Wait, no, if you subtract three, add two. Yeah, I think it is May. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> that was serious. <laughs> I thought you were serious. So what do you look for in nice hay? Let's share that a little bit. Because my client is, they're not horse, no, they're not cattle people. It's not going to a dairy. It's not going to a feedlot. It's going to a horse person. Horse people are pretty picky because the horse owner is generally flaking the hay off themselves and putting it in their horse's uh, trough and then seeing what the horse eats the next day. When you're feeding a dairy or a feedlot, it's all going into machinery and it's getting thrown out and nobody specifically sees it other than the guy in the tractor. So what horse people are looking for is fine stem, green leafy hay. Just looking at this hay right here, and I always compare the stem size, like if you look at uh, like a McDonald's straw versus a coffee stirring straw, you can you can really see like this is very small. I mean, even in the, the bale above it, you can yeah. see it changes. Oh wow, yeah. So that's what you want. That's yes. what you don't want. Yeah. As much of. But this came from the same field. That's why it can be so difficult. Like, oh my hay is stinny. Well, the other part of the field it wasn't. So I don't have to tell you. Go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Feed your horse away. Someone else's hay. And that right there. That is straw. You can tell it's straw because of the way it is. So straw is from like, you know, wheat stalks, um, barley. Depends on what kind of straw. There could be rice straw. There could be alfalfa yeah. straw, Bermuda straw, barley straw. So there's alfalfa straw and alfalfa hay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, after you after you do the, uh, take the seed off if you're making alfalfa seed. Oh, alfalfa so that. straw, right? <laughs> oh, so then the Emma did not know that. A lot of Bermuda straw <laughs> comes out of California, Klein straw, Teff straw. You can make anything into straw. Straw kids, kid straw. Kid straw? Like a kid, just kidding. Do you turn your kids into bad, straw? <laughs> bad dad kids. joke. That would be a bad dad if you're making kids straw. So that is just, it's really tall. Trevor is tall and that thing is tall. It's I, just a very tall stack of hay. About 16 foot. I think they're eight feet tall ish. I think. I don't know. I should know. No. Okay. You're really not. I am 5'11. So let's just say six foot. Now two more feet up. Yeah. Look at the team. September. <laughs> Best so Samsonite. my head is like right there, and then Samsonite. it like boom. And yeah, then so there's more stacks on top of that. It might be taller than me, but. Uh, it's tall enough that it would hurt to fall off of. You know what? I've got a measuring tape in my truck if we really want to know. <laughs> okay, guesses. put your guesses on Did how you... tall yeah. this stack of straw is in the comments, and we're going to measure it. Okay. Final verdict. There's nine foot. Dang it. Nine feet. Nine feet and like three, uh, four inches. Nine feet, three inches. So that whole thing is probably around 18 feet, which that means. That three inches means is a lot. Three inches is a lot. <laughs> because three inches plus three inches adds up to six inches. So that would make that like uh, 18 and a half feet, which rounds up to 19. Because. That's the same reason that boys that are 5'8 are magically 5'11. So that's like a 19 and a half feet tall stack of straw, not hay, but the hay also in the background. And if you, if you notice in the background, there's a lot of big bales. I don't make any big bales, but what I try to be is a one-stop shop for all the customers that come through here. So during the middle of the summer, when dairies are no longer making test quality hay, their low, relative feed value goes down, I'll buy big bales for my father-in-law or their dairymen or there are some farmers that only make big bales. They just export them, but I'll, I'll buy those big bales and stack them up in here. And then I'll just go through them slowly throughout the year just to have the product that someone's looking for.
So it's a lot to think about if you if you start thinking about it. Because when I came down here, I was like, oh yeah, nice. He's got he's got some swag and some hay. And then I got here and I'm like, he has a lot of hay. <laughs> he's got a lot of swag too. And then the floor, the, the flooring, it's real sophisticated. We're gonna show you what's up with it. Rock. And the reason we use river rock, it doesn't seal tight. Oh. It's always got it can the air can breathe through these yeah. through these cracks. And so alfalfa, if it's built with any moisture in it and we stack it in here, that moisture works its way down the stack and just goes right out the rocks. Where if you put it on dirt, that dirt, that moisture will get in the dirt and it'll turn to mud underneath and cake and actually seal off the moisture in the hay in your bottom three or four layers will just be um, like rotted, rotted moldy. Or, or we call I call it like tobacco, almost looks to like tobacco. Interesting. Yeah. So that's why we use these rocks. Yeah. It's almost like you know when you're learning in school, it's like the the roads in Rome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And what's nice about this stuff too, every every uh, uh, winter I'll come through with like a like a light renovator and just bust it all right back up. And okay. Because like right now you're like, oh Trevor, it looks like it's packed in yeah, and sealed. Like... But, but once I go over it once with that renovator, it's it's back to being Aris Rockle Aris Rockley. Porous rockly stuff. So big rocks. Sometimes they'll make small gravel into it, like the barn we were just in with the straw. There was some gravel in there, but for the most part, river rock along the bottom. So that, that allows for, that's something I didn't even think about. I would just put it on dirt. Yeah, yeah, you can't do dirt. We've done dirt, it doesn't work. Yeah, like so. Good. And they're like smooth. Yeah. Those Here's are like, take your shoes off and Go some, jump in the river kind of thing. Some November, oh. November. This was bailed in November. This or, November. Late, late November. I don't remember, but I don't think we're making hay in December this year. Yeah. Like, we've got different varieties. So this, we, we purposely plant ryegrass into a third-year stand of alfalfa. We make this real nice alfalfa ryegrass mix. I mean, we're trying to bring something for all the horse people, mm -hmm. not just alfalfa. Broaden um, your... We, we grow straight Bermuda grass. Uh, teff grass. Why don't we quit growing teff grass? It doesn't like the salt. Um, but yeah, we try to have everything for whatever a specific customer is looking for. So for irrigation, they do flood irrigate everything, correct? Yes. Okay. So they flood except irrigate the everything except for the stuff that isn't flood irrigated. And it comes out of these canals. And you guys have seen canals on my channel before if you've watched for long enough, but we'll show you um, the canals down in Arizona. Not that they're any different, but it's still a canal. Okay. So then this is the canal, which Emma literally just said. This is the head gate. We yes. open open this up. The water crosses this, goes underneath this road, right to the ditch. Oh, are those siphon tubes? Yeah, but we, we only have them in one. This is like the only spot that uses them. <laughs> but it goes right to this ditch. We open these. They're called portholes. So here's how you open these portholes. Oh, you kick them. Well, you can. I'm lazy. Boom. Very solid. Water's in the ditch. Wow. In the field. So then it goes right out to the field. This one's actually plugged up. There is no hole there. That one. Yeah. There. We'll go to the okay. next one. So where he's standing is where it comes out to flood the field. So there's another one. You can see the hole right there. That was satisfying. That pressure is what keeps the water uh, in the ditch and not in the port hole. And you even got a little measurometer measure it's an oh, uh, inches sticker what do they call it yeah, they figure out how many um inches we're running it's an inch it's inches yeah so that's yeah oh you got the fancy they have tubing right there that it floods through and then you got your alfalfa growing so when are you guys going to cut that uh probably probably not till uh, march okay. this is brand new alfalfa actually perfect so if you guys would like to see Trevor with his little journey of alfalfa through this season, go check out his channel and go subscribe to it. Because yeah. if you don't subscribe to it, you miss everything. It's pretty boring. All we do is hay. Well, it's a lot of hay. <laughs> if you like hay like I like hay, then hay. So that is Trevor. So you guys need to go check out his channel if you want to see more from him. Um, he posts pretty consistently. I'm really bad about that. So consistent youtuber farmer in arizona yes the social media influencer of arizona agriculture i did get the first far, uh farm 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 bureau's first 
ag influencer. I got it. That's something I didn't it's know. It's in my back seat. I'm kidding. It's a <laughs> So that's Trevor. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this farm tour, make hey, my sure. Mom's here. <laughs> mom's here. And we're trying. Yeah. Okay. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe, hey, like, grandpa. comment. <laughs> we'll catch you on the next video. Hasta la pasta.